Okay, so let's talk about Bisky's training so we can stay consistent at home. Let's start off with going over her commands. So we have heel, sit, down, place, leave it, and come when called, and free. So let's kind of break those down. When she does a command correctly, we want to reward that command to increase the rate of the behavior. So the more we reward something, the more she's going to perform that command. We also want to use these training tools to correct the unwanted behavior to decrease the rate of those behaviors we don't want to continue to see. So let's start off with heel. Heel is the command to walk next to me on a loose leash. She should be in this command 85 to 90 percent of the time. The other 10 to 15 percent she can be in a free where she sniffs, goes to the bathroom and explores and you follow her on the leash versus her keeping up with your pace. So we have her in a heel and when she's doing a good job we praise, pet, treats. She's a little short so petting might be a little hard but we let her know she's doing a good job throughout her heel walk by rewarding or telling her she's doing a good job. Then if she starts to stray a little bit where she's walking too fast or starts to pull or do anything inappropriate while in the heel walk, we're going to use these tools to correct that behavior to decrease the rate of that behavior. So we have her remote right here. We have the on off little magnet right there. The matching magnet is actually on the remote. So the collar has a magnet and the remote does. We're gonna touch those two together you're going to see a green light that'll tell you her collar is on, charged, ready to go. Then on the back side here, we have the on off button. We're going to push and hold that until the screen lights up. Perfect. And then we're going to use the black S button when we need to correct Bisky for any inappropriate behavior. So we're on a walk. She's doing really great. She sees something distraction, distracting and she tries to walk that way. No correction heel so we always tell her hey that action's inappropriate with the verbal no then we follow through with a correction and then we tell her heel so she knows what to do to get the positive feedback again and then you don't reward right after a correction you have to wait a little bit that way she doesn't think oh I mess up and then I get a treat so you want to make sure there's a little bit of a difference then when she's walking and doing well again good heel and we reward we use this as needed again the black S button then we have the collar so this is to help us whenever she's on the leash. So the collar will attach to the D-ring. It has the flat side. The reason is so when you pull and release, it releases as it should. If you hook it to the circle, it does not release as it should. This should not have constant tension on it. It should not have that triangle. It should be nice and relaxed attached to the leash. And along with the remote collar, you would just give a little pop of the collar to let her know to back up or go whichever direction she's supposed to be in. If she's too far ahead, it's a little pop up and she'll know to go back up a little bit. So that's heel. Again, 85 to 90% can be in the heel position, the other 10 to 15. You can tell her free and that's when you follow her at her pace. So you kind of follow her around, she sniffs, goes to the bathroom and then okay, back to the heel position. That way you have a nice structured walk with a little bit of freedom and you can add more freedom as you go on with training and she gets better at all of the commands, excuse me. So next we have sit. Sit means stay until she's told free. So the stay is implied. This is a short term stay, like when you're walking her and you stop to tie your shoe, you have her sit. Or if you're gonna go through the door, have her sit, open the door. As you open the door, anything distracting happens, remind her sit. That's same thing with all of her commands. If you're walking by a barking dog in a yard, remind her heel so she knows to stay with you and try to ignore that distraction. And when she does, reward if she doesn't correct. But same thing with sit. So when you open the door, you remind her sit and then you have her heel through the doorway together so you guys can go on about whatever walk so she doesn't bolt out of the door. So you can tell her either free or heel depending on what you're wanting her to do because one command can break another and the free is the release word of she doesn't have to be in that position anymore. So that's sit stay. Then we have down stay. Down stay is a little bit longer of a stay. That's where she needs to lay all the way down and you'll see, you saw this in the lobby and you'll see this at the store. Whenever distractions happen, you wanna remind her down. So initially verbal down, if she does great, if not, you know you have the tools. For the collar, the only difference is instead of pulling up, you would 
slightly pull down. You don't have to bend all the way over, but it's just a little, like you lean down a little bit and flick the collar. That way she knows, okay, I have to lay down and she respects your commands because that's what you want to do here. She knows the commands, but we need to make sure you can follow through so she listens to the commands at home, not just here at the facility. So you tell her verbal down. If she does great, we reward low to help encourage her to stay all four, you know, chest to the ground. Then when we walk away, we remind her down. We're almost saying, hey, stay there because if we just walk away, she's likely to just follow our body language and get up and walk with us. So remind her down and then any distractions that happen, you give her a verbal down. When she does a good job, reward low. If not, correct and then fix her, put her back in the same position around the same area that she was in. When we're all done with this command, you don't free from a distance. So you don't tell her down, walk 10 feet away, and then tell her free. Always go back to her, tell her she did a good job with treats, praise, and petting, then tell her free that she can get up from the down. This is gonna promote a really, really strong down stay. Then we have place, same thing with place. Whenever you reward her, put the treat on the bed so she knows that the bed produces the reward. For example, you're having guests come over, you put her on place, she does a good job, reward on the bed. If she makes a mistake, no, correction, use the leash to put her back on the bed. The first time you practice something new, if you're going to practice a command around a different environment or higher distractions, have the leash on too so you can help guide her back to where she's supposed to be if she gets a little overwhelmed or overly excited and confused. So say with down or with play stay, sorry, we put her on the elevated boundary. We tell her place. This is a longer duration stay. So like for example, you're wanting to watch a movie or eat dinner and you don't want her running around put her on place. It promotes structure in the home and especially when guests come over, she's not running up to them and jumping and barking. If she gets off, like we talked about, no correction, tell her place, then lead her back with the leash if needed. When you reward, treats on the bed. We don't free from a distance. Always go back to her, good place, then tell her free. Now we have come when called. Whenever you practice this, definitely have some sort of long leash on her, whether it's a 15 to 30 foot leash as a safety net, especially if you're gonna practice in an area that doesn't have a fence. That way, if you practice and she's like, no, I'm gonna ignore you. One, you use the collar to correct. If you say, come, and she doesn't, no, come, and you also have the leash to pull her into your space because again she knows the command but we have to make sure we follow through so she listens at home with you with the come command you're always going to reward when she does come to you even if she had to get a correction because you want her to know that you're the positive and out there you got corrected but remember i'm the fun one so you want to listen to the command the first time and really build that reward history what reward history is is it's positive feedback for doing a certain behavior so bisky's more likely to do that behavior over over and over again. So you want to create a positive reward history with her running to you because it is a very important command if you ever want to go completely off leash with her. But again, be smart. Make sure you practice with a long leash on, especially in an open area. And if there's cars, definitely, definitely have a leash on her. And then we have leave it, just don't touch that. So practice at home with dog safe foods, drop something, tell her leave it. If she still shows interest in it, leave it. You push that button, the black, the black S button, to reinforce the command of, hey, don't grab that off the ground. You can practice then and move on to different things, different items, so she's not picking a bunch of stuff up off the ground. But again, on your walks, that the heel position should help prevent her grabbing stuff without you knowing it or grabbing stuff in general. So we have leave it, which is just a correction. If she does a good job, definitely praise and pet and reward that so she knows that she did a good job by not getting that item off of the ground. And then we have free, which we've already discussed, is the release command if you don't have to do anything. So add a little bit of structure in her day. Use these commands at least three times a week to keep them fresh. More is always better, but if you don't have time, at least three times a week to practice through everything and keep her sharp. And of course, if you're going to take her somewhere really distracting, you want to train for that because we have the foundation built, but now it's time to build on that and take her to more adventures and really test the training and practice it and have fun with it. So we're going to show you Bisky's commands. Most important things, have fun, stay consistent, and then let us know if you have any questions.
girlfriend. Free. Bisky, stop. Yeah, girl.
down. Good girl. Down. Good down. Good down. Good job. Good down. Free. Good girl. Free? 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 
Okay, so let's talk about the other features of her collar. So let's get this one done first. To take this collar on and off, you actually have to take the links apart. So what I like to do with my right hand is I like to hold a link steady, and then I take another link. It's about uh, technique, not strength. I take another link, I put my thumb on the little curvy part, and then I push down, keeping the links parallel. You wanna just push through. Put the link together, squeeze, and you want it nice and uniform. One more time, hold the link, keep it parallel, push through, squeeze, and it goes in like that. And again, hook the leash to the D-ring. So we know how to turn the collar on, let's turn it off. So this should last about two days on a charge, it is rechargeable. So to turn it off, you're gonna touch the two magnets, you'll see a red light. Red light means it's off. Then push and hold the back button until the screen is dark. We'll turn these back on. So you notice on the screen that Bisky has level 25. This is what's working for her right now. It gets her attention and it does a good job of stopping the unwanted behavior without being too high. So you wanna make sure that the level is high enough to stop the unwanted behavior, but not too high to scare her or make her nervous. Now this level can change and it will change over time depending on Bisky. It's just gonna change with her. So how to change it on the remote. Let's say you are working with her at home and you're having to push the button over and over and over and over and over again. One, check to make sure that this is on. Two, it might be because the level is either not high enough and she's just kind of pushing her limits or you might have to put the prong collar back on to show her that, hey, you're not listening, but I'm gonna help you out and guide you with this leash in that situation, it just depends. But let's say the level's not high enough. How do we adjust that? So this is the dial and it is locked right now. How to unlock it? You're gonna push down and hold for a few seconds until the 1D is flashing. Then you can adjust the level. You can turn it down or you can turn it up. Once you have it on the level you want it, so let's say 25 is not working, try 30. 30 is not working, try 35. I don't think she'll need any higher than that, but you have your options. So once you have it set to the level you want it at, we're gonna push down and hold it, and that keeps it locked in place. Now let's say 25 seems to be too high for Bisky. She's kind of flinching a little bit. She's not acting like herself. You can always turn it down to 20 or 15. It just depends on the environment. Some environments are more distracting than others, and this is what worked on her field trips. So she's more distracted when she's out and about. You might have to turn it up, and then when you get back home, you can turn it back down. Whatever level works for Bisky, that's the level you wanna have on your remote. So we went over the black S button, which is 25. The red S button is a boost feature. This is for emergencies only. Let's say you're practicing come when called and she just takes off towards the road and you call her to come back and she's not coming back to you. You have the red S button. This is going to boost plus 20, meaning it's gonna go up to 45. What this does is if she's at a high adrenaline point, instead of 25, which normally works in this range, we hit her with a 45, which should snap her out of that and then get her back to safety. Again, emergencies only. We have not needed this yet. You probably won't need it with Bisky, but you have it just in case. Then the T button over here is vibrate. What I like to do is push vibrate a couple of times before I put the collar on Bisky so I know that it's on and ready to go. You can also use this in the future as a warning for her. Let's say she's doing pretty good but she made like a little mistake. You don't want to let things go because then it'll snowball into going back into unwanted behaviors. So maybe just a little warning is due. Let's say she's on place and guests come over and she whines a little bit. She stays on place but she whines. You could just say no place and give her a little vibrate because vibrate to me is lower uh, than the stimulation so it goes vibrate stim and then boost of course so those are the main features the on off button the big button in the center is also a flashlight feature so if you just tap it tap it tap it it turns into a flashlight so you can see her at night when she's out and about you can see the little glow Tap it to turn it off. The little M slash C button on the back here, you do not have to worry about. It is set and you, even if you accidentally push it, it's not gonna change anything. That is the charging port. This will take a couple hours to charge. 
I wouldn't recommend leaving it on overnight because then it'll kind of run the battery down. It should last about two days, maybe three days, depending on how much you use it on a charge. But two days, I usually charge mine every other day. So when you put this on Bisky, it should fit snug so the contact points make good connection with her skin. And I like to put the light facing out. That way if I ever need the flashlight feature, I'm more likely to see it because if it's like pushed against her shoulder, you won't be able to see the light. She can wear this all day, every day, 12 to 14 hours a day because you don't want her to become collar savvy. That means she'll only listen with this on. So you want it to be like a watch. She puts it on every day. That way you have access to it every day. Even if you're gonna be busy and you're not gonna have time to do the commands, it's better to have it and not really need it or use it than to need it and use it and not really have it on her. So you wanna make sure you put this on her every day to prevent that collar savviness. I'm gonna turn this off. I think I've gone over everything. Oh, the charging port on here is underneath where the prongs are. This is waterproof, so she can go swimming. You can use it while she's wet. You just want to make sure after she's done swimming, you take the collar off and dry that area thoroughly. Again, it fits snug like a watch, so if we never took our watch off and moisture, dirt, debris gets under there, it could lead into like a bacteria, which could create a skin infection, so we want to make sure we don't do that to Bisky. And then we have her charger, which will charge both the remote and the collar at the same time. This is the original strap that the collar came with. It's just a buckle and it doesn't have the bungee, which I like the bungee because you're not gonna put the collar on too tight. It has a little bit more give to it. And then here we have longer prongs. Her hair is pretty long, but I didn't think it was long enough to put the longer prongs on, but if you want to, you can. And this is the little tool to change them out. And then in here we have her instruction manual to go over all the buttons in greater detail, but we did cover everything you need to know with the collar. So those, that's it. That's her training equipment. That's what we're going to do to stay consistent, reward the behaviors we like to continue to see those behaviors and build a reward history with those behaviors and correct the ones we don't to decrease the rate of those behaviors. So have fun, stay consistent. Let us know if you have any questions. Okay, so when we do Pisky's nails, make sure you have her training equipment on. And we're just going to go, no, don't jump off. We're just going to go nice and easy. So I just start by holding her foot and giving some treats. Good job. Then I tickle in between her toes. Good job. Good. Start by just maybe tapping her little feet with the nail clippers, tapping her nails so she gets kind of used to the sensation. Good job. Always keeping a hold of her foot. There you go and rewarding. So I like to put her foot facing back. You know what? Wait. Wait. Can we do it this way maybe? Yeah. That'll work. Okay, so like I was saying, I like to make her foot facing this way because you can see where her quick is. Good job. Nope. Good. Good girl. Now, ah, the important thing is don't let go when she starts to pull back. Good girl. No. No. You're okay. Good job, see? So I'm compromising a little bit. I'm not like holding her foot how I normally would. That's okay we're showing her she just sits nice and calm to get her nails done she gets treats ideally you would have two people one giving her treats and the other one doing her nails so that's something to keep in mind good 
job. Uh uh, no. 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 Good girl. Good job. So this doesn't have, it's not like a quick process. It does take a minute to do all of her nails. Good job, tap, tap. You know this, you know the tappy taps. Good job. Nah, -uh, no. No. You're okay. See, that wasn't that serious. Now I do have to do that nail again because I didn't quite get it short enough. But at this, no, girlfriend, no. You can lay down. Good job. See how it's ideal to have someone feeding her and clipping her nails at the same time? Yeah. Let's see if we can put some treats down and she can eat while I do this last one. Good girl. No. 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 That didn't work, did it? That's okay. No, girlfriend. No. No. Put your foot down. No, you're fine. Remember the taps. Tappy tap, see? Tap tap and good job. Always keep holding her foot. And while she's eating, that's when you put her foot down. Good job. Good girl. Move this. Nope. Come over here. Go do your other foot. No. Good job. Good job. And I just like using this style of nail clippers. I find it easier. Good job. Look at that. Look at how easy that is. It's going to feel better. It's going to feel so good. Mm -mm. So if she's eating while you're doing this, it'll make it a little bit easier because she'll be focused on something else rather than the sensation. No? No, no. Bisky, no. Whoop. If 
I had three hands, that would be great. This. This, but no. Easy peasy. Good job. See, not that serious. Okay, let's do back feet. I know. Fluffy butt. No. Why don't you lay down? No. Okay. You're okay. No. So this is why you keep her equipment on because she'll start to get frustrated and she might put her mouth on whoever's holding her foot. So we always keep the training equipment on just in case so we can guide her away. You can use peanut butter to distract her. Doesn't have to be hot dogs. But don't do the saran wrap on your face and put peanut butter on it because you don't want her mouth that close to your face when you're doing something she's not a fan of, just in case. A little less comfortable with your back feet being touched, I see. Stop. You are fine, girlfriend. No. There you go. Lay down. Good. Good. Just lay down. There you go. Let's do this foot first. Nope. Down. Down. This key. Down. I know you don't like it, but it's got to get done. Good job. No. Good. Free. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Can you, Haley, do you want to get me like a spoon with peanut butter on it? Thanks. Since you're more uncomfy with your back feet being touched. So I'm just still messing with her feet and giving her treats.
one more nail on this foot. Oh, no, no, no. But the important thing is, you know, once you start, don't stop until you've clipped all of her nails. Because what she's doing is she's just trying to do stuff that she thinks will work so she doesn't have to get this done. So you want to make sure, no, this has to get done. We're going to give you plenty of treats, plenty of positive reinforcement with it. But we're also going to make her do it so she knows that squirming around and wiggling around isn't going to get her way. So you can try peanut butter, you can try hot dogs, but it's better if two people do it with her in the beginning. That way one person can focus on the nails, the other person can focus on using her leash and the treats to keep her calmer for her nail trims. <laughs> 